Hello there and a very warm welcome. You're watching We On. I'm Molly Gampir. These are the headlines from South Asia and across the world. We are tracking at this hour. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his monkey bath address to the nation vows to punish the Uri attackers and keep the people of Jammu and Kashmir safe. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges the people of Pakistan to ask their leaders why India exports software while Pakistan exports terror. Curfew was meanwhile imposed in the Handwara district in the state of Jammu and Kashmir and parts of Srinagar on Saturday, affecting everyday life for the 79th consecutive day. At the BJP National Council meeting in Kerala, Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India to ratify Paris Climate Agreement on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti on 2nd October. Flood situation worsens in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. 17 NDRF teams have been deployed. Making a start at the top of this edition with news coming in from India where in the morning Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the nation in his radio program Monkey Bath where he expressed grief over the Uri attack along with his take on Pakistan. Here is what he had to say. In the past Jammu Kashmir ke Uri sector, in a attack of the Uri sector, in our country, we have been able to do हमने खो दिया मैं सभी बहादुर सैनिकों को नमन करता हूं और उन्हें श्रद्धांजलि देता हूं इस कायराना घटना पूरे देश को जगजोरने के लिए काफी थी देश में शोक भी है आक्रोश भी है और यह क्षति सिर्फ उन परिवारों की नहीं है जिन्होंने अपना बेटा खोया भाई खोया पति खोया यह क्षति पूरे राष्ट्र की है और इसलिए मैं देशवासियों को आज इतना ही कहूंगा और जो मैंने उसी दिन कहा था मैं आज उसको फिर से दोहराना चाहता हूं कि दोषी सजा पा करके ही रहेंगे मेरे प्यारे देशवासियों हमें हमारी सेना पे भरोसा है वे अपने पराक्रम से ऐसी हर साजिश को नाकाम करेंगे और देश के सवा सौ करोड़ देशवासी सुखचैन की जिंदगी जी सके इसके लिए वो पराक्रम की पराकाष्ठा करने वाले लोग हैं हमारी सेना पर हमें नाज है हम नागरिकों के लिए राजनेताओं के लिए बोलने के कई अवसर होते हैं हम बोलते भी हैं लेकिन सेना बोलती नहीं है सेना पराक्रम करती है that was the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi launching an attack on Pakistan in the wake of the Uri terror attack. Also, of course, after that public rally wherein he blamed Pakistan for sponsoring terror. Meanwhile, the situation continues to be tense for the 79th consecutive day in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, where curfew and restrictions remain imposed in some parts of the valley, including Kishtwar and Handwara, following clashes between mobs and security forces. So far, at least 80 people have been killed and over 7,000 injured in the various violent protests since July 8th after the encounter and killing of militant commanders. Meanwhile, staying with India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke on the third and final day of the National Council meeting in Kerala, quoting Deen Dalupathe on the issue of minorities. The Prime Minister said, Do not reward Muslims, do not rebuke them, empower them instead. 
He also added that Muslims should not be treated as a vote bank or as commodities. मुसलमानों को न पुरस्कृत करें और न ही उनको तिरस्कृत करें बल्कि उनका परिष्कार करें मुसलमानों को न वोट की मंडी का माल और न ही कोई घृणा की वस्तु समझे उसे अपना समझे On the other hand, the Congress in opposition has slammed those remarks made by the Indian Prime Minister on the issue of minorities. Let's listen in now to what Congress's Manish Tiwari had to say a while back. Every attempt has been made by his government to browbeat the minorities and try and impose a majoritarian ethos in the country. And after all that, if the Prime Minister talks about empowering the minorities, rebuking, not rewarding, for the lack of a better word, sounds absolutely pathetic and laughable. We'll, of course, keep tracking those developments very closely as the BJP and the Congress treat counter-allegations. But uh, shifting focus to how the Delhi police has registered an FIR in the Ishra Jahan encounter, claiming missing case files. The FIR was lodged by VK Upadhyay, who is an undersecretary to the government of India. The police have also lodged an investigation into the matter. Meanwhile, the documents have reportedly gone missing from the Ministry of Home Affairs. Ishra Jahan and three others, remember, were killed by Gujarat police in an encounter in the year 2004. Staying with India, cracking down heavily on tobacco products, the Supreme Court of India made it clear that it has banned the sale of all forms of chewing tobacco products and asked the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India to enforce that ban. According to media reports, the Apex Court's order enables the authorities to prosecute companies who have resorted to an ingenious way of ensuring the sales of those products in different sachets, despite the 2011 regulation. Moving south of India now, where normal life in southern India's Hyderabad city has been brought to a grinding halt after days of torrential rains that hit the region. The streets now resemble rivers as rain turned heavy and residents have had to wade through waist-deep flood water. In just two days of rainfall, Hyderabad has been swarmed by 16 centimetres of rain. A team of 480 army personnel have been deployed in rain-affected areas for rescue and aid. Meanwhile, the center has issued an alert for coastal areas and states like Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. In fact, moving on to news just coming in and disturbing news at that, seven children have reportedly been killed after they fell into a pothole in Madhya Pradesh's Guna district. According to initial reports trickling in, an investigation has been launched into the incident. Let's switch focus altogether. Attacks on civilians in the Syrian city of Aleppo amount to breach of international humanitarian law. This according to top European Union officials. The officials are now urging the international community to intensify peace efforts. The European Union denounced firebombing, shelling and the deliberate targeting of a humanitarian convoy which took place last week. Meanwhile, UN officials say nearly 2 million civilians were left without water in Aleppo after bombardment damaged a pumping station in the city. Let's move now to the Middle East where an apparent U.S. drone strike has killed five suspected Al-Qaeda members in Yemen. This is the third such attack taking place this week. According to official sources, the drone struck in the Marib province. 
killing the local Al-Qaeda commander Abu Khalid al-Sanani and four guards. The Mare province is largely in the hands of forces loyal to President Abid Rabu Mansur Hadi and his allies in a Saudi-led coalition. But the Al-Qaeda has taken advantage of fighting with the Shiite rebels who control the capital to consolidate its long-standing presence in the province. On to some disturbing news coming in now. Jordanian writer Nahid Hatter has been assassinated in front of the Supreme Court in Amman on Sunday, where he, remember, was facing charges for sharing an offensive cartoon. A Christian and an anti-Islamist activist, Hatter was arrested last month after he posted a caricature on his Facebook account that depicted a bearded man in heaven smoking in bed with women, asking God to bring him wine and cashews. Though he removed that cartoon shortly after sharing it, but authorities said Hutter violated the law by widely sharing the same. He was later charged with inciting sectarian strife and insulting Islam before being released on bail in early September. The shooter has meanwhile been apprehended by security forces. The brother of the slain writer demanded the dismissal of the country's prime minister, claiming that the country has failed to take responsibility for his safety. هذا القاتل واحد تافه اللي قتله زيه زي المسدس ما بعنينا إحنا اللي عنتنا القاتل إحنا لما طلعنا هذا تكفل آخر يوم كان في شرط من وزير الداخلية بأنه أمنك الشخصية مسؤوليتك وليست مسؤوليتنا على أساس بتطلع well, of course, keep an eye out for developments there, but uh, shifting focus briefly back to India, where there's trouble brewing for India's third largest uh, cosmetics company, L'Oreal, after the Maharashtra Food and Drug Administration found traces of mercury in five skin lightening products. According to media reports, tests conducted in April flagged up mercury in products manufactured at the company's Pune plant. Cosmetics containing mercury compounds are banned by Indian law, but the French company has denied those charges according to the World Health Organization. Meanwhile, the presence of mercury in skin lightening products can lead to kidney damage and a range of skin ailments. Now over to some news from Africa, where the embattled leader of jihadist group Boko Haram, Abu Bakar Shakao, resurfaced in a video posted online on Sunday, rejecting assertions by the Nigerian army that he had been seriously wounded. In the film, he mocks the military for claiming he had been killed and says he is happy and in fact in good health. Shakao led a breakaway faction after the main group declared allegiance to Islamic State. Boko Haram, which has killed at least 20,000 people since 2009 in its quest for a hardline Islamist state in northeast Nigeria, has been in the grip of a power struggle since late last year. ليس الهبر كما وزعتم لأنكم قد وزعتم الخبر ونشرتموه في وسائل إعلامكم على أنكم جرحتموني أو قتلتموني فها أنا ذا أقول لكم بإذن الله أيها الطواغيت 